1 Thessalonians, verse by verse, in various versions. Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus, under the church of the Thessalonians, which is in God the Father, and in the Lord Jesus Christ, grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul and Silvanus and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace. This letter is from Paul, Silas, and Timothy to the Christians at Thessalonica. You are united to God the Father and to the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray that God will continue to be very kind to you. We pray also that he will cause you to be without trouble inside yourselves. From Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the Church of the Thessalonians, in union with God the Father and the Lord Jesus, the Messiah. May grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, be yours. From Paul and Silvanus and Timothy, to the Church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace and peace to you. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the Church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the assembly of the Thessalonians, in God the Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers. We give praise to God at all times for you, keeping you in memory in our prayers. We thank God for all of you at all times. Every time that we pray, we always pray for you. We always thank God for all of you when we mention you in our prayers. We thank God always for all of you as we mention you constantly in our prayers. We always give thanks to God for all of you, mentioning you in our prayers. Remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of God and our Father. Having ever in mind your work of faith and acts of love and the strength of your hope in our Lord Jesus Christ before our God and Father. We speak about you to God who is our Father. We remember the good things that you do. You do those things because you believe Christ. You work very much because you love Christ and other people. We remember also how you continue to hope strongly because of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the presence of our God and Father, we constantly remember how your faith is active, your love is hard at work, and your hope in our Lord Jesus the Messiah is enduring. Because we recall in the presence of our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and endurance of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. Remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope, in our Lord Jesus Christ, before our God and Father. Remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and perseverance of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, before our God and Father. Knowing, brethren, beloved, your election of God. Being conscious, my brothers, dear to God, that you have been marked out by God's purpose. You are like brothers and sisters to us, and God loves you. We know that God has chosen you to be his own. Brothers whom God loves, we know that he has chosen you. Knowing, brethren beloved, your election of God. We know, brothers and sisters loved by God, that he has chosen you. We know, brothers loved by God, that you are chosen. 
For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power, and in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance, as you know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. Because our good news came to you not in word only, but in power, and in the Holy Spirit, so that you were completely certain of it, even as you saw what our behavior to you was like from our love to you. We know that because our good news came to you, not only with words, when we told it to you, the power of God's Spirit was there too. Also, we felt completely brave and strong when we spoke. You know how we lived among you. You know what kind of people we were. We were like good guides for you. For the gospel we brought did not come to you in words only, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit, and with deep conviction. Indeed, you know what kind of people we proved to be while we were with you, acting on your behalf. In that our gospel did not come to you merely in words, but in power and in the Holy Spirit and with deep conviction. Surely you recall the character we displayed when we came among you to help you. And that our good news came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit, and with much assurance. You know what kind of persons we showed ourselves to be among you for your sake. And that our good news came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit, and with much assurance. You know what kind of men we showed ourselves to be among you for your sake. And you became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. And you took us and the Lord as your example, after the word had come to you in much trouble, with joy in the Holy Spirit. And you learned to live as we lived, so you learned also to live like the Lord. People caused you a lot of trouble and pain, because you believed the message about Christ. But you did believe it, and God's Spirit caused you to be very happy. You became imitators of us and of the Lord, in spite of a great deal of suffering. You welcomed the word with joy that the Holy Spirit produces. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord when you received the message with joy that comes from the Holy Spirit, despite great affliction. You became imitators of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction, with joy of the Holy Spirit. You became imitators of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction, with joy of the Holy Spirit. So that you are in samples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia so that you became an example to all those who have faith in Christ in Macedonia and Achaia. And so you became like a guide to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. As a result, you became a model for all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. So that you were in samples to all that believed in Macedonia and Achaia. As a result, you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. So that you became an example to all who believe in Macedonia and in Achaia. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to Godward is spread abroad so that we need not to speak anything. 
For not only was the word of the Lord sounding out from you in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God is made clear, so that we have no need to say anything. Because of you, people in many places have listened to the message about the Lord. It was not only the people in Macedonia and in Achaia who listened to these things, but people everywhere know how you believe God, so we do not need to say anything. For from you the message of the Lord has echoed forth, not just in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place reports of your faith in God have spread, so that we do not need to say anything. For from you the word of the Lord has been declared, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith toward God has gone out, so that we do not need to say anything. For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. For they themselves give the news of how we came among you, and how you were turned from images to God, to the worship of a true and living God. Those people themselves speak about how you believed our message. They tell how you turned to God. They tell us how you stopped worshiping false gods. They themselves say that you are now God's servants. God is alive, and only he is really God. For people keep telling us what kind of welcome you gave us, and how you turned away from idols to serve a living and true God. For people everywhere report how you welcomed us, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. For they themselves report concerning us what kind of a reception we had from you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God. For they themselves report concerning us what kind of a reception we had from you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God. And to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Waiting for his Son from heaven, who came back from the dead, even Jesus, our Savior from the wrath to come. Also you are waiting for God's Son to come from heaven. God caused his Son, Jesus, to become alive again after he had died. And Jesus saves us so that God will not be angry with us at that future time and to wait for his Son, whom he raised from the dead, to come back from heaven. This Jesus is the one who rescues us from the coming wrath. And to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, our Deliverer, from the coming wrath. And to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus. Which delivered us from the wrath to come. For yourselves, brethren, know our entrance in unto you, that it was not in vain. For you yourselves, brothers, are conscious that our coming among you was not without effect. Our friends, you yourselves know that our visit to you had good results. For you yourselves know, brothers, that our visit to you was not a waste of time. For you yourselves know, brothers and sisters, about our coming to you. It has not proven to be purposeless. For you yourselves know, brothers, our visit to you was not in vain. For you yourselves know, brothers, our visit to you wasn't in vain.
But even after that we had suffered before and were shamefully entreated, as you know, at Philippi, we were bold in our God to speak unto you the gospel of God with much contention. But after we had first undergone much pain and been cruelly attacked, as you saw at Philippi, by the help of God we gave you the good news without fear, though everything was against us. Before we came to you, the people at Philippi had done bad things to hurt us, and they had spoken very bad words to us. You know that. But our God caused us to be brave, so that we could tell you his good news. Many people tried to stop us, but we did tell you God's message. As you know, we suffered persecution and were mistreated in Philippi. Yet we were encouraged by our God to tell you his gospel, in spite of strong opposition. But although we suffered earlier and were mistreated in Philippi, as you know, we had the courage in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in spite of much opposition. But having suffered before and been shamefully treated, as you know, at Philippi, we grew bold in our God to tell you the good news of God in much conflict. But having suffered before and been shamefully treated, as you know, at Philippi, we grew bold in our God to tell you the good news of God in much conflict. For our exhortation, was not of deceit, nor of uncleanness, nor in guile. For our witness does not come from error, or from an unclean heart, or from deceit. We were telling you the good news so that you could believe God. We told you only true things. We had no wrong purpose. We did not want you to believe things that are not true. For our appeal to you does not spring from deceit, impure motives, or trickery. For our exhortation was not of deceit, nor of uncleanness, nor in guile. For the appeal we make does not come from error, or impurity, or with deceit. For our exhortation is not of error, nor of uncleanness, nor in deception. But as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God, which tries our hearts. But even as the good news was given to us by the approval of God, so we give it out not as pleasing men, but God, by whom our hearts are tested. Instead, we say what God wants us to say. He has chosen us to tell his good news. We do not speak so that we can make people happy, but we do want to make God happy, and God discovers what our purposes really are, deep inside ourselves. Rather, Because we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel, we speak as we do, not trying to please people, but God, who tests our motives. But just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel, so we declare it, not to please people, but God, who examines our hearts. But even as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the good news, So we speak, not as pleasing people, but God, who tests our hearts. But even as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the good news, so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God, who tests our hearts. For neither at any time used we flattering words, As you know, nor a cloak of covetousness, God is witness.
For it is common knowledge among you that we never made use of smooth-sounding false words. And God is witness that at no time were we secretly desiring profit for ourselves. We never tried to say nice things about you so that you would like us. You know that. We never demanded money or other things from you. We never had a secret purpose like that. God knows this. As you know, we did not come with flattering words or with a scheme to make money. God is our witness. For we never appeared with flattering speech, as you know, nor with a pretext for greed. God is our witness. For neither were we at any time found using words of flattery, as you know, nor with a pretext for greed. God is witness. Nor of men sought we glory, neither of you nor yet of others, when we might have been burdensome as the apostles of Christ. Or looking for glory from men, from you or from others, when we might have made ourselves a care to you as apostles of Christ. We did not want people to say great things about us. We did not want you to do that. And we did not want anyone else to do that. We are Christ's special workers and teachers. So we could have used our authority over you. We could have caused you to do things for us. We could have caused you to supply things for us. We did not seek praise from people, from you or from anyone else. Nor to seek glory from people, either from you or from others. Nor seeking glory from people, neither from you nor from others, when we might have claimed authority as apostles of Christ. Nor seeking glory from men, neither from you nor from others, when we might have claimed authority as apostles of Christ. Nor of men sought we glory, neither of you nor yet of others, when we might have been burdensome as the apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, even as a nurse cherishes her children. But we were gentle among you, like a woman caring for her little ones. But instead we were kind when we were with you. We were kind like a mother who looks after her little children. Even though, as apostles of the Messiah, we might have made such demands, instead, We were gentle among you, like a nursing mother tenderly caring for her own children. Although we could have imposed our weight as apostles of Christ, instead we became little children among you, like a nursing mother caring for her own children. But we were gentle among you, even as a nurse cherishes her children. So, being affectionately desirous of you, we were willing to have imparted unto you, not the gospel of God only, but also our own souls, because you were dear unto us. Even so, being full of loving desire for you, we took delight in giving you not only God's good news, but even our lives, because you were dear to us. We were very fond of you, So we wanted very much to tell you the good news from God. Also, we wanted to give ourselves completely to help you. We wanted to do these things because we loved you very much. We cared so deeply for you that we were determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our very lives. That is how dear you were to us. With such affection for you, we were happy to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own lives, 
because you had become dearer to us. Even so, affectionately longing for you, we were well pleased to impart to you not the good news of God only, but also our own souls, because you had become very dear to us. Even so, affectionately longing for you, we were well pleased to impart to you not the good news of God only, but also our own souls, because you had become very dear to us. For you remember, brethren, our labor and travail, for laboring night and day, because we would not be chargeable unto any of you, we preached unto you the gospel of God. For you have the memory, my brothers, of our trouble and care, how working night and day, so that we might not be a trouble to any of you, we gave you the good news of God. Our friends, you should certainly remember how we worked so very much. We worked during the day and at night. We worked so that we did not need to ask any of you for anything. So then, we did not cost you anything while we taught you God's good news. Brothers, you remember our labor and toil. We worked night and day so that we would not become a burden to any of you while we proclaimed the gospel of God to you. For you recall, brothers and sisters, our toil and drudgery by working night and day so as not to impose a burden on any of you. We preached to you the gospel of God. For you remember, brothers, our labor and travail, for working night and day, that we might not burden any of you, we preach to you the good news of God. You are witnesses, and God also, how holily and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you that believe. You are witnesses with God, how holy and upright and free from all evil was our way of life among you who have faith. You and God are witnesses of how pure, honest, and blameless our conduct was among you who believe. You are witnesses, and so is God, as to how holy and righteous and blameless our conduct was toward you who believe. You are witnesses with God how holy, righteously, and blamelessly we behaved ourselves toward you who believe. As you know, how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you as a father does his children. Even as you saw how, like a father with his children, we were teaching and comforting you all and giving witness. You know that we helped each of you. We were like a father who helps his own children. We taught you and we helped you to be brave and strong as believers, and we told you very strongly what you must do. You must do what makes God happy. God has chosen you to belong to his own people, the people that he rules over. He wants you to be with him always in the beautiful place where he lives. You know very well that we treated each of you the way a father treats his children. As you know, we treated each one of you as a father treats his own children. As you know, we exhorted, comforted, and implored every one of you as a father does his own children. That you would walk worthy of God, who has called you unto his kingdom and glory. We comforted and encouraged you, urging you to live in a manner worthy of God, who calls you into his kingdom and glory exhorting and encouraging you and insisting that you live in a way worthy of God who calls you to his own kingdom and his glory. 
We exhorted, comforted, and implored every one of you to lead a life worthy of God, who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. To the end that you should walk worthily of God, who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, which you heard of us, you received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually works also in you that believe. And for this cause we still give praise to God, that when the word came to your ears through us, you took it, not as the word of man, but as it truly is, the word of God, which has living power in you who have faith. There is also another reason why we continue to thank God always. When we told God's message to you, you believed it as words from God. You knew that it was not only a human message. You believed it as God's message, which it certainly is. And God's words do powerful things in you who believe him. Here is another reason why we constantly give thanks to God. When you received God's word, which you heard from us, you did not accept it as the word of humans, but for what it really is, the word of God, which is at work in you who believe. And so we too constantly thank God that when you received God's message that you heard from us, You accepted it not as a human message, but as it truly is, God's message, which is at work among you who believe. For this cause we also thank God without ceasing, that when you received from us the word of the message of God, you accepted it not as a human word, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which also works in you who believe. For this cause we also thank God without ceasing, that when you received from us the word of the message of God, you accepted it, not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which also works in you who believe. For you, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For you also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews. For you, my brothers, took as your examples the churches of God which are in Judea in Christ Jesus, because you underwent the same things from your countrymen as they did from the Jews. And now, my friends, you have become like the Christians who belong to God's people in Judea. People in your own country have caused trouble and pain for you, And that is what happened in Judea, too, to the believers in Christ Jesus there. People in their own country caused trouble and pain for them. For you, brothers, became imitators of the churches of God in Judea that are in union with the Messiah, Jesus. You suffered the same persecutions from the people of your own country as they did from those Jews. For you became imitators, brothers and sisters, of God's churches in Christ Jesus that are in Judea, because you too suffered the same things from your own countrymen as they in fact did from the Jews. For you, brothers, became imitators of the churches of God which are in Judea in Christ Jesus. For you also suffered the same things from your own countrymen, even as they did from the Judeans. For you, brothers, became imitators of the assemblies of God, which are in Judea in Christ Jesus. For you also suffered the same things from your own countrymen, even as they did from the Jews. Who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets, and have persecuted us, and they please not God, and are contrary to all men.
who put to death the Lord Jesus and the prophets, violently driving us out, who are unpleasing to God and against all men. The people who caused that trouble even killed the Lord Jesus and the prophets, and they caused trouble for us so that they caused us to leave their country. God is not happy with those people. He is very angry with them. They are very much against people everywhere. Who killed the Lord Jesus and the prophets, who have persecuted us, and who please neither God nor any group of people. Who killed both the Lord Jesus and the prophets, and persecuted us severely. They are displeasing to God and are opposed to all people. Who killed both the Lord Jesus and the prophets, and drove us out, and did not please God, and are hostile to all people. Who killed both the Lord Jesus and their own prophets, and drove us out, and don't please God, and are contrary to all men. Forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved, to fill up their sins all way, for the wrath is come upon them to the uttermost. Who to make the measure of their sins complete, kept us from giving the word of salvation to the Gentiles, but the wrath of God is about to come on them in the fullest degree. Because they do not want us to speak to people from other nations, they do not want God to save anyone from another nation. Those people always continue until they have done their last sin, but in the end, God has punished them. As they try to keep us from telling the Gentiles how they can be saved, as a result, they are constantly adding to the number of sins they have committed. However, wrath has overtaken them at last. forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved, to fill up their sins all way, for the wrath is come. Upon them to the uttermost. Because they hinder us from speaking to the Gentiles, so that they may be saved, Thus they constantly fill up their measure of sins, but wrath has come upon them completely. Forbidding us to speak to those who are not Jewish, that they may be saved, to fill up their sins always, but wrath has come on them to the uttermost. But we, brethren, being taken from you for a short time in presence, not in heart, endeavored the more abundantly to see your face with great desire. But we, my brothers, being away from you for a short time in body, but not in heart, had all the more desire to see your face. But you are like brothers and sisters to us. We have had to go away from you for a short time, but it was only our bodies that left you. We did not stop thinking about you. We wanted very, very much to see your faces, and we tried very much to visit you again. Brothers, although we have been separated from you for a little while, in person but not in heart, we eagerly desire to see you again face to face. But we, brethren, being taken from you for a short time in presence, not in heart, endeavored the more abundantly to see your face with great desire. But when we were separated from you, brothers and sisters, for a short time in presence, not in affection, we became all the more fervent in our great desire to see you in person. But we, brothers, being bereaved of you for a short season in presence, not in heart, tried even harder to see your face with great desire. Wherefore, we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. For which reason we made attempts to come to you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan kept us from coming. We wanted to return to you, certainly I, Paul, tried again and again to return, but Satan made it impossible. 
That is why we wanted to come to you. Certainly, I, Paul, wanted to come time and again, but Satan blocked our way. Because we wanted to come to you, indeed, I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? Are not even you in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? For what is our hope or joy or crown of glory? Are not even you before our Lord Jesus at his coming? We wanted so much to visit you because you cause us to hope so strongly. You make us sure that God will continue to work in you. You cause us to be very happy. To us, you are like a crown that a winner receives. The crown shows that the winner has done well. You show that our work among you had good results. So you are our crown that makes us very happy. We will be very happy when we stand in front of our Lord Jesus. That will be when he comes again. After all, who is our hope, joy, or reason for rejoicing in the presence of our Lord Jesus at his coming? It is you, isn't it? For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? Isn't it even you before our Lord Jesus at his coming? For you are our glory and joy. For you are our glory and joy. Yes, it is because of you that we are so happy. We are happy about the results of our work. Yes, you are our glory and joy. For you are our glory and joy. Wherefore, when we could no longer forbear, we thought it good to be left to Athens alone. At last, our desire to have news of you was so strong that while we ourselves were waiting at Athens, when we could not wait any longer to know news about you, we decided to stay in Athens city alone. We thought that it was the best thing to do. Therefore, when we could stand it no longer, we decided to remain alone in Athens. So when we could bear it no longer, we decided to stay on in Athens alone. Therefore, when we could not stand it any longer, we thought it good to be left behind at Athens alone. Therefore, when we couldn't stand it any longer, we thought it good to be left behind at Athens alone. And sent Timotheus, our brother and minister of God, and our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ, to establish you and to comfort you concerning your faith. We sent Timothy, our brother, and God's servant in the good news of Christ, to give you strength and comfort in your faith. And we sent Timothy to visit you. He is like our brother. He works with us for God to tell people the good news about Christ. We sent Timothy so that he could help you to believe Christ strongly and to be brave. And send Timothy, our brother, who works with us for God in the gospel of the Messiah, to strengthen and encourage you in your faith. We sent Timothy, our brother and fellow worker for God in the gospel of Christ, to strengthen you and encourage you about your faith. And sent Timothy, our brother and God's fellow worker, in the good news of Christ, to establish you and to comfort you concerning your faith. And sent Timothy, our brother, and God's servant, in the good news of Christ, to establish you and to comfort you concerning your faith. That no man should be moved by these afflictions, for yourselves know that we are appointed thereunto. That no man should be moved by these afflictions, for yourselves know that we are appointed thereunto. So that no man might be moved by these troubles, because you see that these things are part of God's purpose for us. 
So then none of you will stop believing because of the troubles and pain that people cause you. You yourselves know that there must be troubles and pain for us. That is part of God's purpose for us. So that no one would be shaken by these persecutions, for which you are aware that we were destined. So that no one would be shaken by these afflictions, for you yourselves know that we are destined for this. That no one be moved by these afflictions, for you know that we are appointed to this task. For verily, when we were with you, we told you before that we should suffer tribulation, even as it came to pass, and you know. And when we were with you, we said to you that trouble was before us, and so it came about as you see. Even when we were with you, we told you to be ready for future trouble. We told you that people would certainly cause you a lot of trouble and pain, and that did happen. You know that. In fact, when we were with you, we told you ahead of time that we were going to suffer persecution, and as you know, that is what happened. For in fact, when we were with you, we were telling you in advance that we would suffer affliction, and so it has happened, as you well know. For truly, when we were with you, we told you beforehand that we are to suffer affliction, even as it happened, and you know. For most certainly, when we were with you, we told you beforehand that we are to suffer affliction, even as it happened, and you know. For this cause, when I could no longer forbear, I sent to know your faith, lest by some means the tempter have tempted you, and our labor be in vain. For this reason, when I was no longer able to keep quiet, I sent to get news of your faith, fearing that you might be tested by the evil one, and that our work might come to nothing. That is why I had to send Timothy. I could not wait any longer, so I sent him to you. I wanted to know whether you were continuing to believe Christ. I was afraid that Satan had caused you to turn away from Christ, so all our work among you would have no results. But when I could stand it no longer, I sent Timothy to find out about your faith. I was afraid that the tempter had tempted you in some way, and that our work had been a waste of time. So when I could bear it no longer, I sent to find out about your faith, for fear that the tempter somehow tempted you, and our toil had proven useless. For this cause I also, when I could not stand it any longer, sent that I might know your faith, for fear that by any means the tempter had tempted you, and our labor would have been in vain. But now, when Timothy came from you unto us, and brought us good tidings of your faith and charity, and that you have good remembrance of us always, desiring greatly to see us as we also to see you. But now that Timothy has come to us from you, and has given us good news of your faith and love, and that you have happy memories of us, desiring greatly to see us, even as we do to see you. But now Timothy has come back to us from you, and he has told us good news about you. He has told us how you are continuing to believe Christ. You are continuing also to love God and each other, and you are always happy when you think about us. You want very much to meet us again, as we want to meet you. Timothy has told us these things. But Timothy has just now returned from visiting you, and has told us the good news about your faith and love. He also told us that you always have fond memories of us, and want to see us, just as we want to see you. But now Timothy has come to us from you, and given us the good news of your faith and love, and that you always think of us with affection, and long to see us just as we also long to see you. 
But when Timothy came just now to us from you, and brought us glad news of your faith and love, and that you have good memories of us always, longing to see us, even as we also long to see you. Therefore, brethren, we were comforted over you in all our affliction and distress by your faith. For this cause, brothers, in all our trouble and grief, we were comforted about you because of your faith. So we have become stronger and braver because of you, who are like brothers and sisters to us. People have caused us very much trouble and pain, but we were very happy to know that you were continuing to believe Christ. That's why, brothers, in all our distress and persecution, we have been encouraged about you by your faith. So in all our distress and affliction, we were reassured about you, brothers and sisters, through your faith. For this cause, brothers, we were comforted over you in all our distress and affliction through your faith. For now we live if you stand fast in the Lord. For it is life to us if you keep your faith in the Lord unchanged. Now, because of you, we are like people who have become alive again. You are united to the Lord. And if you continue to believe him strongly, that makes us very happy. For now, we can go on living as long as you continue to stand firm in the Lord. For now we live if you stand fast in the Lord. For now we are alive again if you stand firm in the Lord. For now we live since you stand firm in the Lord. For what thanks can we render to God again for you, for all the joy wherewith we joy for your sakes before our God? For how great is the praise which we give to God for you, and how great the joy with which we are glad because of you before our God. Now we can thank God very much for you. We are very, very happy when we talk to God about you, and so we thank him for that. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we have in God's presence because of you? For what thanks can we render to God again for you, for all the joy wherewith we joy, for your sakes before our God? For how can we thank God enough for you, for all the joy we feel because of you before our God? For what thanksgiving can we render again to God for you, for all the joy with which we rejoice for your sakes before our God. Night and day, praying exceedingly that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. Night and day, requesting God again and again that we may see your face and make your faith complete. We continue to ask God that we might visit you We pray like that every day and every night. We want very, very much to visit you. We want to teach things to you that you still need to know, so then you can really believe Christ as you should believe him. We pray very hard night and day that we may see you again face to face, so that we may equip you with whatever is lacking in your faith. We pray earnestly night and day to see you in person and make up what may be lacking in your faith. Night and day praying exceedingly that we may see your face and may perfect that which is lacking in your faith. Night and day praying exceedingly that we may see your face and may perfect that which is lacking in your faith. Now, God himself and our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way unto you. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus make a way for us to come to you. We pray this to God himself, who is our Father, and to our Lord Jesus. We pray that they will prepare the way for us to visit you. 
Now may our God and Father and our Lord Jesus provide a way for us to visit you. Now may God, our Father himself, and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you. And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another and toward all men, even as we do toward you. And the Lord give you increase of love in fullest measure to one another and to all men, even as our love to you. We pray also that the Lord will cause you to love each other more and more. We love you, and we want you to go on loving all people more and more in the same way. May the Lord greatly increase your love for each other and for all people, just as we love you. And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love, one toward another and toward all men, even as we do toward you. And may the Lord cause you to increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we do for you. And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love for one another and for all, even as we also do toward you. To the end, he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. Then your hearts will be strong, blameless, and holy in the presence of God, who is our Father, when our Lord Jesus appears with all his saints. So that your hearts are strengthened in holiness to be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. To the end he may establish your hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. To the end he may establish your hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. Furthermore, then, we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as you have received of us how you ought to walk and to please God, so you would abound more and more. Now, friends, we want to say this to you. We taught you how to live so that you make God happy and certainly you are living like that. Now we ask you very strongly to continue to live like that more and more. On behalf of the Lord Jesus, we ask you to do this. Now then, brothers, you learned from us how you ought to live and to please God, as in fact you are doing. We ask and encourage you in the Lord to do so even more. Finally then, Brothers and sisters, we ask you and urge you in the Lord Jesus that as you received instruction from us about how you must live and please God, as you are in fact living, that you do so more and more. Finally then, brothers, we ask and urge you in the Lord Jesus that as you received from us how you ought to live and to please God, even as you are living, that you excel more and more. Finally then, brothers, We beg and exhort you in the Lord Jesus, that as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God, that you abound more and more. For you know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus, because you have in mind the orders we gave you through the Lord Jesus. You know what we told you, we told you what you must do. The Lord Jesus gave us authority to tell you those things. You know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For you know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. For you know what commands we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication. For the purpose of God for you is this, that you may be holy and may keep yourselves from the desires of the flesh. What God wants is this, 
He wants you to be completely good and separate from everything that is bad. So you must not have wrong sex. You must not have sex with anyone who is not your own wife or husband. For it is God's will that you be sanctified. You must abstain from sexual immorality. For this is God's will that you become holy, that you keep away from sexual immorality. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, so that every one of you may keep his body holy and in honor. Each of you must learn how to rule his own body, so then you will always do what is right and proper. Each of you must know how to control his own body in a holy and honorable manner. That each of you know how to possess his own body in holiness and honor. That each one of you know how to control his own body in sanctification and honor. not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God, not in the passion of evil desires like the Gentiles who have no knowledge of God. You should not be like the people who do not know God. They are always wanting very much to have sex. They cannot stop themselves because they want it so much, but you should not be like those people, not with passion and lust like the Gentiles who do not know God not in lustful passion like the Gentiles who do not know God, not in the passion of lust even as the Gentiles who don't know God, not in the passion of lust even as the nations who do not know God. That no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. And that no man may make attempts to get the better of his brother in business. For the Lord is the judge in all these things, as we said to you before and gave witness. No man among you should ever have sex with a woman who is not his own wife. He would be taking something that is another man's. So he would be doing a wrong thing to that man who is like his brother. The Lord will punish everyone who does things like that. We have told you this very seriously before. Furthermore, you must never take advantage of or exploit a brother in this regard, because the Lord avenges all these things, just as we already told you and warned you. In this matter, no one should violate the rights of his brother or take advantage of him, because the Lord is the avenger in all these cases, as we also told you earlier and warned you solemnly that no one should take advantage of and wrong a brother or sister in this matter, because the Lord is an avenger in all these things, as also we forewarned you and testified. For God has not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. Because it is God's purpose that our way of life may be not unclean, but holy. God did not choose us to do bad and dirty things. He chose us to be completely separate from everything that is bad. For God did not call us to be impure, but to be holy. For God has not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. For God did not call us to impurity, but in holiness. For God called us not for uncleanness, but in sanctification. He therefore that despises, despises not man, but God, who has also given unto us his Holy Spirit. Whoever then goes against this word, goes against not man, but God, who gives his Holy Spirit to you. So anyone who does not obey this rule is not refusing to obey a human person. Instead, he is refusing to do what God says, and God gives you his Spirit, who is completely good. Therefore, whoever rejects this instruction is not rejecting human authority, but God, who gives you his Holy Spirit. Consequently, the one who rejects this is not rejecting human authority, 
but God, who gives his Holy Spirit to you. Therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God, who has also given his Holy Spirit to you. Therefore, he who rejects this doesn't reject man, but God, who has also given his Holy Spirit to you. But as touching brotherly love, you need not that I write unto you, for you yourselves are taught of God to love one another. But about loving the brothers, there is no need for me to say anything to you in this letter, for you have the teaching of God that love for one another is right and necessary. But I do not need to write to you about how you should love other believers. God himself has taught you to love each other. Now, you do not need anyone to write to you about brotherly love, since you have been taught by God to love each other. Now, on the topic of brotherly love, you have no need for anyone to write you, for you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. But concerning brotherly love, you have no need that one write to you, for you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. And indeed, you do it toward all the brethren which are in all Macedonia. But we beseech you, brethren, that you increase more and more. And truly, you are lovers of all the brothers in Macedonia, but it is our desire that your love may be increased still more. Certainly, you do love all the believers in all Macedonia, but we ask you strongly, friends, to love each other more and more. In fact, you are showing love to all the brothers throughout Macedonia, but we urge you, brothers, to keep on doing this even more. And indeed, you are practicing it toward all the brothers and sisters in all of Macedonia, but we urge you, brothers and sisters, to do so more and more. For indeed you do it toward all the brothers who are in all Macedonia, but we exhort you, brothers, that you abound more and more. And that you study to be quiet and to do your own business and to work with your own hands as we commanded you. And that you may take pride in being quiet and doing your business, working with your hands as we gave you orders. Try very much not to cause trouble for anyone. Be busy only with your own things, not with other people's things, and work with your hands. We told you before that you must do these things. Also, make it your goal to live quietly, to mind your own business, and to work with your own hands as we instructed you. And that you study to be quiet and to do your own business, and to work with your own hands as we commanded you. To aspire to lead a quiet life, to attend to your own business, and to work with your hands as we commanded you. And that you make it your ambition to lead a quiet life, and to do your own business, and to work with your own hands, even as we instructed you. That you may walk honestly toward them that are without, and that you may have lack of nothing that you may be respected by those who are outside and may have need of nothing. Then, if you do these things, other people will think good things about you. People who do not believe Christ will think good things about you. They will know that you are honest and good. Also, if you do these things, you will not need anyone else to supply anything for you, so that you may win the respect of outsiders and have need of nothing. In this way you will live a decent life before outsiders, and not be in need. That you may walk properly toward those who are outside, and may have need of nothing. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. But it is our desire, brothers, that you may be certain about those who are sleeping, so that you may have no need for sorrow, as others have, who are without hope. Friends, we want you to understand properly about the people who have died, so you will not be sad about them, as other people are sad about their dead friends. 
those other people are sad because they have nothing to hope for after death. But we do not want you to be ignorant, brothers, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve like other people who have no hope. Now, we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who are asleep, so that you will not grieve like the rest who have no hope. But we don't want you to be ignorant, brothers, concerning those who have fallen asleep, so that you don't grieve like the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For if we have faith that Jesus underwent death and came back again, even so those who are sleeping will come again with him by God's power. But we believe that Jesus died. We believe that he became alive again after death. So we also believe this about the people who have died united to Christ. We believe that God will bring those people back with Jesus. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring those who have died with him. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, so also we believe that God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep as Christians. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep in Jesus. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are still living at the coming of the Lord will not go before those who are sleeping. We are now telling you something that the Lord has said. We tell you this about the day when the Lord will come. Those of us who are still alive on that day will not go to meet the Lord first. We will certainly not go before those people who have already died. For we declare to you what the Lord has told us to say. We who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who have died. For we tell you this by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will surely not go ahead of those who have fallen asleep. For this we tell you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will in no way precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Because the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a word of authority, with the voice of the chief angel, with the sound of a horn, and the dead in Christ will come to life first. On that day, God will shout with authority. Also people will hear the voice of an important angel. They will hear the sound of God's trumpet and the Lord himself will come down from heaven. Then those people who have died, united to Christ, will become alive again, and they will rise first. With the shout of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, the Lord himself will come down from heaven, and the dead who belong to Messiah will rise first. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a shout of command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with God's trumpet, the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord.
Then we who are still living will be taken up together with them into the clouds to see the Lord in the air. And so will we be forever with the Lord. After that, those of us who are still alive at that time will go up. God will take us up to be together with them in the clouds. He will take us to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord always. Then we who are alive and remain will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air, and so will we be with the Lord forever. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be suddenly caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will always be with the Lord. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, so we will be with the Lord forever. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So then, give comfort to one another with these words. So tell these things to each other, so you will not need to continue being sad. So then, encourage one another with these words. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. But about the times and their order, my brothers, There is no need for me to say anything to you. Friends, we do not need to write to you about the dates and times when these things will happen. Now, you do not need to have anything written to you about times and dates, brothers. Now on the topic of times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you have no need for anything to be written to you. But concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need that anything be written to you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For you yourselves have the knowledge that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. You know very well about how the day of the Lord's return will happen. That day will surprise people very much, as when someone comes to rob people at night. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. For you know quite well that the day of the Lord will come in the same way as a thief in the night. For you yourselves know well that the day of the Lord comes like a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace, and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. When they say, There is peace and no danger, then sudden destruction will come on them, as birth pains on a woman with child, and they will not be able to get away from it. At that time people will say, We are safe and there is no trouble for us, but then when they are not ready for it, a lot of trouble and pain will happen to them. That trouble will happen to them, like the pains of a woman who is giving birth to a baby, and it will be impossible for anyone to get free from that trouble. When people say, there is peace and security, destruction will strike them as suddenly as labor pains come to a pregnant woman, and they will not be able to escape. Now, when they are saying, there is peace and security, then sudden destruction comes on them, like labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will surely not escape. 
For when they are saying peace and safety, then sudden destruction will come on them, like birth pains on a pregnant woman, and they will in no way escape. For when they are saying peace and safety, then sudden destruction will come on them, like birth pains on a pregnant woman, then they will in no way escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. But you, my brothers, are not in the dark for that day to overtake you like a thief. But you, people who are like brothers and sisters to us, you know about these things. So you are not like people who live in the dark, and so the day when the Lord returns should not surprise you. That day will not surprise you as when someone comes to rob people. However, brothers, You are not in the darkness in order that the day of the Lord might surprise you like a thief. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in the darkness for the day to overtake you like a thief would. But you, brothers, are not in darkness that the day should overtake you like a thief. But you, brothers, aren't in darkness that the day should overtake you like a thief. You are all the children of light. And the children of the day, we are not of the night nor of darkness. For you are all sons of light and of the day, we are not of the night or of the dark. All of you are people who are the Lord's people, so you belong to the light and to the day. We are not people who belong to the night or to the dark. For all of you are children of the light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to darkness. For you all are sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. You are all children of light and children of the day. We don't belong to the night nor to the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. So then, let us not take our rest as the others do, but let us be self-controlled and awake. So we should not be like other people. We should not be like people who are sleeping. Instead, we should be like people who continue to be awake. We should think clearly about what is happening. Therefore, let's not fall asleep like others do, but let's stay awake and be sober. So then, We must not sleep as the rest, but you must stay alert and sober. So then, let us not sleep as the rest do, but let us watch and be sober. So then, let us not sleep as the rest do, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. For those who are sleeping, do so in the night. And those who are the worse for drink are so in the night. It is at night that people sleep. It is at night that people are drunks. For people who go to sleep, go to sleep at night. And people who get drunk, get drunk at night. For those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who get drunk, are drunk at night. For those who sleep, sleep in the night. And those who are drunk, are drunk in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. But let us who are of the day be serious, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and on our heads the hope of salvation. But we belong to the day, so we should watch and we should think clearly. We must continue to believe God and to love Him, so we will be like soldiers who put on breastplates. Also, we must continue 
to hope strongly that God will save us, so we will be like soldiers who put on metal hats to keep their heads safe. But since we belong to the day, let's be sober. We must put on the breastplate of faith and love and the hope of salvation as a helmet. But since we are of the day, we must stay sober by putting on the breastplate of faith and love and as a helmet, our hope for salvation. But let us, since we belong to the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. But since we belong to the day, let's be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. For God's purpose for us is not wrath, but salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. God did not make us his people so that he could be angry with us. He has not chosen us so that he can punish us. Instead, he has chosen us so that he can save us. He saves us because of what our Lord Jesus Christ has done. For God has not destined us to receive wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus, the Messiah. For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. But God did not destine us for wrath, but for gaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. For God didn't appoint us to wrath, but to the obtaining of salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to the obtaining of salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Who was put to death for us, so that awake or sleeping, we may have a part in his life. Jesus died for us, so that we can live together with him, When he comes, we will live with him. Whether we are alive or dead at that time, there will not be any difference. We will all live with him. Who died for us in order that, whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. He died for us so that whether we are alert or asleep, we will come to life together with him. He died for us that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also you do. So then, go on comforting and building up one another, as you have been doing. So, tell these things to each other, so that you do not feel sad or weak. Help each other to become stronger as believers, as you are doing already. So then, encourage one another, and build each other up, as you are doing. Therefore, encourage one another, and build up each other, just as you are in fact doing. Therefore, exhort one another and build each other up, even as you also do. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. But we make this request to you, my brothers, 
Give attention to those who are working among you, who are over you in the Lord, to keep order among you. Now we ask you, our friends, to remember how valuable your leaders are. They work among you and they look after you. They teach you how you should live as the Lord's people. They tell you when you do wrong things. Brothers, we ask you to show your appreciation for those who work among you, set an example for you in the Lord, and instruct you. Now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who labor among you and preside over you in the Lord and admonish you. But we ask you, brothers, to recognize those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. And to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake and be at peace among yourselves. And have a high opinion of them in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves. Show them how valuable they are to you, and love them very much because of the work that they do. Do not quarrel with each other. Hold them in the highest regard, loving them because of their work. Live in peace with each other. And to esteem them most highly in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves and to respect and honor them in love for their work's sake. Be at peace among yourselves. Now, we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. And our desire is that you will keep control over those whose lives are not well ordered giving comfort to the feeble-hearted, supporting those with little strength, and putting up with much from all. Tell lazy people that they should work. Speak to those people who are afraid. Help them to be brave. Help those people who are weak. Be patient with everyone. Friends, we ask you strongly to do these things. We urge you, brothers, to admonish those who are idle. Cheer up those who are discouraged, and help those who are weak. Be patient with everyone. And we urge you, brothers and sisters, admonish the undisciplined, comfort the discouraged, help the weak, be patient toward all. We exhort you, brothers, admonish the disorderly, encourage the faint-hearted, support the weak, be patient toward all. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Let no one give evil for evil, but ever go after what is good for one another and for all. If a person has done something wrong to you, do not do something wrong back to them. Be careful that none of you does things like that, but always try to do good things to each other and to everyone else. Make sure that no one pays back evil for evil. Instead, always pursue what is good for each other and for everyone else. See that no one pays back evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good for one another and for all. See that no one returns evil for evil to anyone, but always follow after that which is good for one another and for all. Rejoice evermore. Have joy at all times. Always be happy. Always be joyful. Rejoice evermore. Always rejoice. Rejoice always. Always rejoice. Pray without ceasing. Keep
Keep on with your prayers. Pray at all times. Continually be prayerful. Pray without ceasing. Constantly pray. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In everything give praise, for this is the purpose of God in Christ Jesus for you. Whatever things may happen to you, continue to thank God. God wants you to do this because you are united to Christ Jesus. In everything, be thankful because this is God's will for you in the Messiah, Jesus. In everything, give thanks for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. In everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus toward you. Quench not the Spirit. Do not put out the light of the Spirit. Do not stop letting God's Spirit work in you as people might put out a fire. Do not put out the Spirit's fire. Quench not the Spirit. Do not extinguish the Spirit. Do not quench the Spirit. Don't quench the Spirit. Despise not prophesyings. Do not make little of the words of the prophets. Listen carefully when people speak messages on God's behalf. Remember that those messages are important. Do not despise prophecies. Do not treat prophecies with contempt. Don't despise prophecies. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Let all things be tested. Keep to what is good. But think carefully about everything to see if it really is from God. Then be careful to remember and to obey everything that is good. Instead, test everything. Hold on to what is good. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. But examine all things, hold fast to what is good. But test all things, hold firmly that which is good. Test all things, and hold firmly that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Keep from every form of evil. Refuse to have anything to do with any kind of bad or wrong thing. Keep away from every kind of evil. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Stay away from every form of evil. Abstain from every form of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. May the God of peace himself make you holy in every way, and may your whole being, spirit, soul, and body remain blameless when our Lord Jesus the Messiah appears. Now, may the God of peace himself make you completely holy, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept entirely blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. May the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless, 
at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calls you, who also will do it. God, by whom you have been marked out in his purpose, is unchanging and will make it complete. God has chosen you to be his people, and he always does what he has promised to do, so he will do this for you. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will continue to be faithful. He who calls you is trustworthy, and he will, in fact, do this. He who calls you is faithful, who will also do it. Brethren, pray for us. Brothers, keep us in mind in your prayers. Our friends, please pray for us. Brothers, pray for us. Brothers and sisters, pray for us too. Brothers, pray for us also. Brothers, pray for us. Greet all the brethren with an holy kiss. Give all the brothers a holy kiss. Say hello to all the believers. Kiss them as you would kiss your brother. Greet all the brothers with a holy kiss. Greet all the brothers with a holy kiss. I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read unto all the holy brethren. I give orders in the name of the Lord that all the brothers are to be present at the reading of this letter. I tell you very seriously on behalf of the Lord that you should read this letter to all the believers. I order you by the Lord to have this letter read to all the brothers. I call on you solemnly in the Lord to have this letter read to all the brothers and sisters. I solemnly command you by the Lord that this letter be read to all the holy brothers. I solemnly command you by the Lord that this letter be read to all the holy brothers. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. I pray that our Lord Jesus Christ will continue to be very kind to you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus the Messiah be with you. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen.